Okay, this is the presentation I wish I had a year ago. <laughs> a year ago when I got started. Um, if for the, anyone new out there who might be listening, um, I have three key messages for you. One, you can definitely do this. Two, this is a good way to start. And three, check out the link at the end of the presentation. First off, here's a good reading list to get started with especially item two it's very deep and it comes from the folks at zen hub and if you went through this and you did some homework you played around and experimented you might end up with this basic stack for doing your own dev flow so i'm i'm looking at doing google sheets add-ons and then again you'll see some of the same concepts that were mentioned earlier where you're using github to host the origin or truth repository you're using Git flow. So inside of that origin, you have a master and a develop branch that you're always using. And then you're following Git flow rules for making updates, which means you're creating separate branches and merging them into, into develop and then putting them into master following some conventions that, that have worked for a while. Uh, let's see, Zen Hub, basically it integrates natively with GitHub's user interface. It's a layer of planning without the context switching. It's I think it's very good. So far, so good. Um, the work you do locally, if you're working locally, I like to use Atom. It's a uh, hackable code editor. I think for other reasons, people might want to use Eclipse because it's better integrated. Um, and then Git Kraken, which is a Git GUI. Uh, it's really fabulous. Uh, let's see. Then if you're working in the web editor, um, as we saw earlier, so these presentations are complimentary. Um, if, if you're working in the Google script editor, you want to use the, the gas GitHub assistant to interact with your remote repository. What does it look like? Let's look at some screenshots. Here's Git Kraken on Mac. You see that the branch history is, uh, first of all, it's visual. Uh, it's uh, oriented vertically with the newest on the top. And uh, on your left, you know, you can see what's local. You can see what's remote. Uh, and then you can see the tags that have been applied. Um, and then also you see that Git flow. They have a, a, a Git flow layer. Uh, so you can start uh, releases, hot fix, hot fixes or features. Um, let's see. Oh, I did want to mention um, the cost is very low. Uh, you can you could do it for free if you're using public repos. If you pay a little bit of money, you can have private repos and Git Kraken will let you manage uh, merge conflicts inside of its tool. Here's a Zen board, a Zen Hub's task board. I like to call it a Zen board. It's a, they have seven default pipelines that you push your issues through and you can learn all about that. It's sort of a post agile scrub approach uh, moving on oh as you can see in the top here you see boards so um zen hub literally is a chrome extension that injects its its functionality inside of github so it's seamless it feels like it's part of github which is a very interesting approach um the next one is this is a look at the atom editor itself um, it can interact directly uh, with your repos, or you can manage all that via Git Kraken, which is what I do. Um, it, uh, this was just talked about. Let me, next slide. Here's a list of practices that you want to employ. Uh, more or less, the overall approach is that you're using Zen Hub task boards or Zen boards instead of GitHub projects. You're using GitHub issues as if they were work tickets or user stories and you're using uh, GitHub milestones um, as your sprints. Uh, let's see here, you want to, key things to make it work, you wanna have a label scheme that goes beyond types. You, you might wanna do some automation um, to standardize some naming conventions uh, and you wanna implement some templates as well on GitHub. Here's the label scheme I'm using right now. Probably the highlight of it, uh, two things. Um, there's a tool, a link to a tool that allows you to copy labels between repos, very handy. Um, probably the thing I like best about my own label scheme is uh, that there's a set for complexity. So the, the, I associate t-shirt sizes 
which is a borrowed idea. And then I put ranges of story points. So story points are ways to estimate that are unitless um, because people are better at comparing um, relative sizes. And then ZenHub has injected in your issue a milestone field for you to actually put what the estimate is. This is how ZenHub runs their backlog of issues through their pipelines. And you'll notice that uh, your product backlog would have, um, once it has enough detail, it floats up to the top in priority and detail. Once it has uh, an estimate and a milestone, and or excuse me, once it's been assigned to a milestone, you're basically running a sprint. Somebody working on it pulls it into progress and keeps working. <clears throat> Here's an example of what the semantic versioning would look like. Um, more on that later. Things to watch out for. Well, I would say one thing about semantic versioning. Um, I like to use it in my commit titles because um, it, it's really handy to follow. So not just the major releases where you have like um, x.y.z, right? Um, I go dash the change topic and then dot iteration number. And so that works whether it's a hotfix or a feature. And when I see them in the commits histories, it just sort of orients you. Uh, there's a list of things to watch out for, uh, like merging Zen boards, uh, we didn't, stuff we didn't talk about, um, closing issues, some gotchas, um, a few notes on releases and versioning, uh, which is an important note, basically. You're, well, we'll get into that another time. Uh, what's next? Go to this repo and you'll find uh, the starter templates that are in there, the label scheme that I mentioned. If you star and watch it for ongoing updates, um, what I think I'm going to do is is update this DevFlow repo to maybe also do demos or something in the future. And then as I do that, I try to model what the DevFlow looks like. Um, so that's a public repo. And then the slides are up there. There's a, a PDF link. You can download it. And all of the links that were listed are live. Uh, seven minutes. Any questions? <laughs> I think it adds another lovely flavor to you know how how you can approach this, and um, it's it's clearly a topic that you've you've um, you've spent a lot of time getting to grips with. I, I wonder, if, uh, Steve Bruce, you you have any comments? Yeah, um, does you know one of the things you'll find with GitHub is that because everyone uses it, regardless of which language they're using and everything else, like zillions of people use it. There's massive amounts of add-ons and tools and everything else that you can use to make your development experience wonderful. Uh, and, you know, I, th I think it's, if, if you're not using GitHub, then you really should. It's it's quite hard to get started with. And, but, and I would say that if you introduce too many tools at the beginning, um, before you realize the fundamentals of GitHub, you might get a little bit confused. So I would say start slowly, get to know GitHub, and then add some of the wonderful tools that are out there to organize your life, as, as Rudy has clearly done. Uh, Rudy, do you want to just respond to Bruce's comment? Yeah, that's fine. I just, um, I would definitely like to to model later, like how you how I'm keeping my semantic version inside the code, and then how I'm using that everywhere else, like in, in analytics, it writes to it, um, how, how I'm managing that and what it looks and feels like, because it's, um, I think if people can see it, it's a lot better. So I wanted to sort of, you know, slice the cake all the way. And so I hope this, this repo would be a way to, um, to evolve exactly, formalize what I think is a workflow for me. Um, and it helps me, it helps me move on to more stuff. So. I, I appreciate the time, and if anyone takes a look at it, star and follow my first public repo. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be there. Zach, <laughs> Zach, did I saw you unmuted your video? I, I didn't know you ah. went. Yes, no, you just so I I thought it was great. Um, I will look at it in detail and try to start using it um, because it looks very very helpful. Cool. Thanks. And it's, it's, it's awesome that that uh, it's integrated into uh, that that repo. Thanks. And and I would add um, when I thought of this topic for today, it's one of those things. Let's continue the conversation. So there's a lot of people leveraging GitHub with things like AppScript, for example. 
So please give us feedback and maybe on the next episode, we can share some of those other processes that you have. So thanks. I have one question for you, Rudy. So um, you mentioned Git Kraken, I think now as a, a desktop um, tool. So I use the um, GitHub also have, I, I certainly know for Windows, they have a, a desktop application that you can use um, that puts a nice kind of skin on this. Uh, did you look at the official GitHub offering before choosing Git Kraken? Is there anything in Git Kraken that you think aces it? Um, let's see. Um, you're talking about the um, the GitHub desktop. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like what I liked about it is that I could um, just click and open my repo directly from it, right? Um, but I find that um, that Git Git Kraken is 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 much more powerful. It's it's basically it's basically Git. It's a visual version of Git, and um, you know because I was intimidated by the command line of Git. And yeah. you know, it took me some time to to kind of appreciate what was going on with Git. But that's why I, I really appreciate like the reading that I listed. You know, if you go and read, you know, Git Flow was something that guy was using. Published a post in 2010 about, and you start to see it, you know, become popular. And you just like get pull step back and think about the concept, and then look at the tool. It starts to make more sense. And I'm still trying to shake out, you know, shake out my Dev Flow too, right? As far as the versioning goes, and and. But but for me, as a as somebody with a with a process background, it's all about reducing the friction and improving the visibility and and some of the the standardizing the way you're using things. Like like uh, maybe in another session, I'll show you know I put some code in there where you can um, sort of make make your code ready for testing. So say you open up a new uh, a new sheet or excuse me a new script and you you pull your work in there, you could make it ready and it will use your apply your standards to naming of the script. And grab you a default sheet uh, using the same name, so that when you publish to test as add-on, right, you're you're doing this cleanly, and it's really easy to clean up after yourself. You could also put like uh, base cases of data, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, but to your question, yeah, um, the uh, for me, yeah, I like to get cr get cracking better, especially after I realize, you know, once I double click on uh, on a head, so I'm checking out and moving the head to a particular branch, um, I just swap over to to Adam and I'm, it, that's where I'm at in, in Adam. So yeah. it works it works pretty well, although I haven't been able to really use Adam to actively actively code and get feedback from, you know, from the uh, from the compiler uh, on the uh, if that's the right word <laughs> on the on the Google side. But uh, but it works out because right I I push if I'm working on a feature branch I push it um, as was demonstrated earlier um, you know I push it to to the cloud editor right and then I make changes there and then when if I'm happy with them I increment my my I iterate my semantic version and I push that back back to the branch which is temporarily pushed up to the to the origin and you know it it really works for managing changes. Mm -hmm. It does uh, Atom have the autocomplete? I think I saw a request for this a, a long time ago. I is is that there yet? Uh, the autocomplete? No, um, it's not. Um, as far as you mean autocomplete in the namespacing of Google's yeah. uh, API services? No, it's not. I, I do remember a long time ago when I was looking at this, I saw somebody um, mention that you could download it. Um, the 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 download it and use it. It wouldn't be always perfectly up to date, but it'd be good enough for for autocomplete. But I haven't seen an answer to that. The, the, there is something available in Eclipse, I think, that um, as a, a plugin. So there is there is something that could be, um, you know, that is packageable. That you know, the the Eclipse one Google developed and released. Um, but I, I think, as Steve says, um, this has been a really interesting conversation to start, and I think um, it would be good to, to continue it. <laughs>